board for October 15th, 2020. Um, and if whoever's here, if you could please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance, we'll try to do this in unison and we'll see how, how well we do. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Into the, into the republic, into the republic for, which for which it stands, a nation, nation under God, God. indivisible, with liberty, with liberty and, justice and justice for all. For all. We're, we're really not good at that, but, but we just, <laughs> it's in the heart. It comes from the heart. Okay, so um, could we have roll call for attendance, please? Absolutely. Chairman LaRue. Yes. Vice Chairman Impemba. Member Clerk Raymond. Present. Member Covino. Present. Member Espejo. Present. Member Gaffney. Here. Member Rappaport. Okay. okay. Well, so we, we have so we're going to start. Oh. Um, uh. Yep, go ahead, Barbara, that's your part. First, there's an announcement. The Town of Burlington will be holding the October 15th, 2020 Planning Board as a virtual electronic meeting due to the current state of emergency due to the COVID-19 crisis. As such, the Governor issued an executive order on March 12th, 2020, authorizing remote meetings under General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20. So this meeting is held via Cisco WebEx and accessible as follows. Uh, the link is also available on the planning board website and on the posted agenda on the town calendar. Um, the meeting, so it's townofburlington.webex.com. The meeting number is 173-889-7351, meeting password 2020. You can also join by phone, 617-315-0704. It's also being broadcast through BCAT on government Comcast 99, RCN 15, Verizon 4 to Channel 41, and streamed on Facebook Live via the VCAT Facebook page. The public will be able to make comments during the hearing during the time for public comment. Questions can be asked via WebEx, phone, Facebook Live, WebEx chat, and email at Burlington Planning at Burlington.org. All persons wishing to ask a question or make a comment must identify themselves. If you have any questions regarding participation during the meeting, please call the planning staff at 781-270-1645 or email at planning at burlington.org. Um, all votes will be taken by a roll call vote. Um, and then just the first order of business, which the chairman will announce, um, will be we will be going into executive session and leaving this meeting, but um, we'll probably be 20, 20 minutes, 20, 25 minutes or so, and then reconvening back in the session. But, with that, I hand it back to the chairman. Thank you. So, um, as Kristen said, we are entering into executive session um, to discuss pending litigation. I'm looking for a motion. Um, Madam Chair, I will make a motion to enter into executive session per Mass General Law, uh, Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, in order to discuss slash consider strategy with respect to litigation in the matter of General Walker Estates, LLC versus uh, Lou et al. Land Court document number 20, MISC miscellaneous 000342, where an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the planning board and the chair so declares and to reconvene an executive session at the conclusion and excuse me, to reconvene in regular session at the conclusion of executive session as authorized by Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21B4. This is Mike, I'll second. Liz, you're on mute. Chairman LaRue. <laughs> yes. Vice Chairman Incumba. Member Clerk Raymond. Yes. Member Cavino. Yes. Member Gaffney. Yes. Member Espejo. Yes. Member Rappaport. Yes. Okay. Does everyone now have the co the information to get to executive session? Brenda, good. Yes, I do. Thank you. All right. Great. Okay. We'll be back. All right. See you later. 
everybody and to the people who are waiting and listening thank you for your patience our executive executive session is over and we are ready to move on for the rest of our agenda we do have some continuances and withdrawals that we need to take up first if i may have a motion please uh, motion to take item 8 b out of uh, order second Chairman LaRue. Yes. Vice Chairman Impumba. Uh, Member Clerk Raymond. Member Covino. Yes. Member Gaffney. Yes. Member Espejo. Yes. Member Ralph Report. Okay. Um, so Barbara, you should you should probably read the um what this the we actually didn't put what this was. So this is um we didn't put the so this is the definitive subdivision for zero Birch Street. Okay, so um, what we're discussing right now is a motion um, to accept a withdrawal um, regarding this particular definitive subdivision of land in Burlington at Birch Street. And um, if I, I think we just need a motion about that. Uh, I would like to make a, a motion that the planning board hereby accepts the applicant's request to withdraw without prejudice the application for approval of a definitive subdivision entitled Definitive Subdivision of Land in Burlington, Mass, Birch Street, prepared by Alan C. Nelson, PLS, dated March 20, March 2nd, 2020, as requested by the applicant's attorney in a letter dated October 15, 2020. Second. Chairman LaRue. Yes. Vice Chairman Impemba. Yes. Member Clerk Raymond. Yes. Member Cavino. Yes. Member Gaffney. Yes. Member Espejo. Yes. Member Rappaport. Yes. And mem uh, Madam Chair, I don't want to take too much longer and too much time. Um, if anyone is listening and wants to know more information about why there's a withdrawal, there's a letter from the um, building department, and we certainly can get that to anyone who it's a it was a, a matter of a legal matter that um, ended up being the reason for this withdrawal. Um, and if anyone would like any more information, is listening, reviewing, um, please contact the planning department. Thank you. Thank you, Madam, Madam Chair. I'd like to make a motion to take items A, D, and E together and out of order. Second. Thank you, Chairman Larue. Yes. Vice Chairman Impumba. Yes. Member Clerk Raymond. Yes. Cavino. Yes. Member Gaffney. Yes. Member Espejo. Yes. Member Rappaport. Yes. And because it's not written, I just want to mention what those two things were. They were the planning board um, applications for special permits under um, 4314G wireless communication facility, as well as 848 small cell wireless facility outside of the right of way for 49 Middlesex Turnpike with the applicant new singular wireless PCS LLC um, AT&T CO center line communication. So thank you. Thank you. Do you want to further motion? Yes, please. The planning board hereby accepts the request of new singular wireless PSC LLC uh, Doing business at and uh, regarding center line communications to withdraw the application for special permit pursuant to section 4.3.14 parentheses G wireless communication facility at 848 small wireless facilities outside of the right of way of the Burlington zoning bylaw for the property at 279 Cambridge Street without prejudice or requested by the applicant's attorney in an email dated October 13th, 2020. 
So that's 49 Middlesex Turnpike, not 279 Cambridge Street, just to clarify. But the, everything else is correct. Second. Okay. Chairman LaRue. Yes. Vice Chairman Impumpa. Yes. Member Clerk Raymond. Yes. Member Cavino. Yes. Member Gaffney. Yes. Member Espejo. Yes. Member Rappaport. Okay, um, this is Barbara again. Next, we have citizens time. Anyone wishing to make a comment or ask a question on an item that is not on our agenda, please identify yourself now. Do we see anyone, staff? No, okay, then we will move on to announcements. Kristen? Uh, so, Madam Chair, uh, as much as announcements are important, so is our town council's time and having to jump off at seven. If the board doesn't mind if we can hold announcements until after the 108 Miller Road discussion? Absolutely. May I have a motion to take matter um, item 8A out of order? Is that so what we want to do? So, so made. Second. Uh, Chairman LaRue. Yes. Vice Chairman Impemba. Yes. Member Clerk Raymond. Yes. Member Covino. Yes. Member Gaffney. Yes. Member Espejo. Yes. Member Rappaport. Yes. Okay, thank you, Liz. Item 8A is a continued public hearing application for approval of an amendment to a definitive subdivision plan, 108 Muller Road. Edward and Elena Nivitskaya are the applicants. And who is here representing the applicant? Your Honor, uh, uh, Madam Chair, Brian Levy. Hi, Brian. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for your patience. I, um, I, I didn't know if, um, Kristen, you wanted to have a report you wanted to deliver first, or I can start. Uh, why don't you kick us off and I'll um, certainly jump in. Okay, thank you. Um, first of all, thank you for uh, holding this hearing uh, earlier in the evening than usual. Um, I, I appreciate it. Uh, when we left you last time, um, there were a few remaining issues. Um, the main one seemed to be uh, the Conservation Commission and um, securing uh, the comments of the Conservation Commission before this board um, took any action. Um, last, so what we did was uh, rather than having this hearing last time we continued it to give us a chance to get in front of the conservation commission um there was a public meeting um at which the um uh conservation commission reviewed and considered the uh modification application to shift the driveway um there was a full discussion and then um uh, uh a uh document was posted on your website uh after a vote was taken by the um Actually, there was no vote. There was just comments that were delivered by the uh, commission members, uh, and the uh, email came from the uh, conservation agent, um, and it said as follows, quote, the conservation commission supports the shift of the driveway further from the pond. They did express concerns about grading, drainage, and tree plantings associated with the driveway. They will, however, fully review drainage and grading as part of their notice of intent permit review. So that was the comment from the, um, the Conservation Commission um, uh, commenting, I think, favorably on the movement and saying that they supported the movement of the driveway as we're showing it in this uh, modified plan, roughly moving it about 10, 15 feet away um, from the, um, the pond. Um, uh, also on this issue, the, the uh, town council has commented to you before that in terms of the uh, order of, of permitting, um, that there's no need for my client to secure a uh, order of conditions first before the planning board acts. Um, it's the applicant's choice in terms of the phasing of the permitting. Um, and we've chosen to, to do this modification first with the planning board because it would move the road further from the pond, uh, which would put us in a better uh, position with the um, with the Conservation Commission moving uh, uh, pavement away from the pond. Um, 
And so we've chosen to go down this route, um, um, uh, nor do the uh, planning board's uh, rules and regulations uh, require uh, that there be a prior decision on the NOI uh, before a decision on the, uh, the, the modification or amendment of the uh, subdivision. Um, just a couple of other uh, quick points, uh, one of those being landscaping. Um, the planning board had asked us to show uh, landscaping. We did on the plan that was submitted, and um, we showed a series of trees along either side of the driveway. Uh, we've come to learn that um, the Russells may not uh, be in favor of that. My client's position is whatever the board decides, they will abide by. So if there are trees or there are no trees or there are fewer trees, Whatever you decide, um, my clients are fine with that. Um, we also uh, heard discussion last time by the planning board uh, about concerns with drainage and grading. And we have su submitted documents to the planning board on those issues. Um, and Alan Nelson is also available to briefly summarize them. But I think that um, subject to the uh, Madam Chair, unless you wanna hear from Mr. Nelson, I would say that the Conservation Commission has sort of addressed this issue and has said in its comments that they're going to, under the NOI, they're going to fully review uh, drainage and grading. Um, so we don't need to, to get into that unless you would like us to. We would certainly do that. Um, that's, that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Levy. At this time, I think we can hold off on that. I'd like to hear from our town council and from Kristen, and then we'll see if any members of the board have questions that are specific to that. Uh, sure, let me just quickly start. Um, the items that you discussed at the last meeting were trees, grading, drainage, and just ensuring in action. So those three things. We I did attend the Conservation Com Commission meeting last Thursday. It was very good. Um, they did have some questions about the just drainage. Um, it wasn't clear that there was a permeable um, pavement driveway. Um, they did want to make sure that there wasn't any runoff, um, especially as it kind of tips toward 30 Cormier Road a little, just to make sure that if there needs to be a gravel trench or some other type of measure, just to be sure that there isn't any runoff. They, they had asked the planning board to make sure that they looked at that. They were favorable of the trees. As mentioned, the Russells did mention that they liked the viewshed of the pond, which I'm sure certain we can um, work out. Um, they also, the Russells mentioned um, grading changes that um, had happened over time. And I think what that made us think about was just to make sure that it was very clear that any changes to the site, um, grading, construction, anything, be absolutely on the applicant's property or within the easements that they have um, interest in. So, uh, and to make sure that they mark those areas in the field prior to construction. So you'll see those um, conditions reflected in, in the draft decision that you have before you. So um, in terms of the kind of the, this action and the amendment, the amendment to the subdivision is simply the movement of the um, driveway. There's no new waivers being requested as part of this. Um, in terms of that question that I know was asked at the last meeting, especially by Member Gaffney, I think at the end as to kind of what happens, what are the options for the board? Um, I would um, give that to Adam to weigh in quickly um, before we get into discussions. Thank you, Kristen, and thank you, Adam, for staying with us. We would love to get your advice and, and input now. Uh, sure, Madam Chair, so, so thank you. So I, I think that my presence was primarily requested tonight so that I could provide uh, additional feedback or answer any additional questions that the board might have as a follow-up to the, the public hearing uh, that was conducted a few weeks ago. Um, I, I think I can echo what Kristen said, uh, certainly not uh, on the facts because I didn't participate in the Conservation Commission meeting, but with regard to what is before uh, the planning board and, and what is uh, what it is that you're being asked to act upon, it, it is an amendment. So. Um, the underlying subdivision approval um, will not change it, it, unless you grant the amendment, in which case, of course, it would be the, the amendment would be incorporated into the underlying approval. But if you choose to deny the amendment, that does not amount to a denial of the underlying subdivision. That subdivision decision still stands. Obviously, it is subject to appeal, and so it has not yet become final. But what's before you is very simply the relocation of the driveway that you see here on the screen. 
and whether the relocation of the driveway is consistent with the purpose and intent of the subdivision control law and your rules and regulations. Um, as Kristen had indicated, there are no additional or different waivers that are being requested. If that were the case, then you could apply the, the well-known sort of public interest standard in determining whether a waiver should be granted or denied, and you would have great discretion in doing that. But in this case, there are no new waivers. So you're, you're really and truly looking at the relocation of the driveway to determine whether it is uh, more or less or equally consistent with the subdivision control law as the original location of the driveway. And um, in making that decision is is uh, is what you're what you're now tasked with, irrespective of the underlying approval, irrespective of the, the pending litigation. You, of course, have the discretion to condition any amendment as you see fit. You know, a good example of that would be the the proposed uh, screening or, or or landscaping that's shown on this plan. Um, you have the discretion to, to require that or not to consider preferences of, of neighbors and so forth. Um, as part of an approval. Okay, thank you so much. Um, so board members, you've heard it from Mr. Levy and Mr. Costa and from Kristen, we're talking about moving the driveway. Let's not, uh, let's try to stay focused on that and not, not take our eye off of that, what we're actually discussing tonight, which is just the amendment. So um, I'm gonna go through the, the board again and ask people to weigh in. Joe, are you, do you have something you'd like to ask or comment on? Nope, I'm all set. Okay. Um, Paul, Paul Raymond, did you have any questions or comments? No, I'm just opposed to it. I do, okay. by the way, one comment that kind of bears on this. I asked Brady today, since this is at the end of a long, long, long driveway uh, into this area, uh, well, how wide, and, and the, the right of way is, is 15 feet. I wanted to know how wide that big uh, ladder truck was to be going down a 15 foot driveway, which I, as I told you at one point when I went to look at this area was absolutely complete. Uh, ladder truck. So um, I'm just opposed to anything else going on down there. But I did want to know uh, how safe, if you will, that it is to have to have uh, a, a, that big ladder truck going down that 15 foot right away in the winter time, and you know how much leeway they would have one way or another before ending up in the swamp. <laughs> yeah. Madam Chair, if we could respond. Um, yes, please. Um, Alan Nelson, I think, is on the line. Alan, could you talk about the um, your experience with uh, these uh, the, this width of driveway in uh, um, in Burlington? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, good. Well, uh, I'm not a fire truck expert, but I know the Commonwealth has a limited width on vehicles, and it's 109 inches, uh, from what we've understood. As far as widths of driveways, um, I know just to take an example, uh, Gary Roofing has a driveway on Bedford Street that's 13 feet wide, and it's uh, almost twice as long as the driveway that's proposed here. And then if you go a few feet up opposite Francis Wyman Road, there's a uh, road called Haven Terrace. Uh, you're both probably familiar with that. Uh, that has a 12 foot right of way that accesses three, uh, not three, not four, but six houses. So um, it has if, been done. If I can in... inter interject for just a minute. Sure. I, I don't I don't know if it pays for us to look at other surrounding developments. Uh, it, this is, we're just talking about shifting the driveway here. So to address Paul's question, you I think you answered that about the size of the truck. Well, I just want to make sure you know what we're not talking about going down that long, long driveway off of Muller Road. This one is coming in from so it's significantly shorter, I think, than the one you were looking at when you drove up down there. I could be mistaken, but I just want to make sure that we're all talking about the same thing. This is in the other direction toward Cormier, and it's much shorter than that other drive that we originally looked at when we looked at this development. Thank you, Madam Chair. 
Mm -hmm. So are you, are you opposed to shifting this driveway, Paul? Because that's all we're talking about right now is just shifting the driveway that goes to Cormier so that it's a little bit further away from the pond. I understand that, but what are the implications? Why do they suddenly have come to the uh, need for the public good to shift that, that fire away from the pond? I don't get it. I, the, I don't see what the other purpose in this is, but it's going to cost some money to change the driveway. And are they just doing this as a goodwill gesture? Or does this change any of the conditions down there that might possibly, for instance, allow the, the uh, development of another lot? Um, that's not my understanding. I don't think that this shift has anything to do with that. I think the shift has more to do with questions regarding the right of way and that by shifting the driveway, um, the, it's my understanding that the, the right of way is more clear. Is that, if, I'm not sure I'm expressing that correctly. Kristen, would you like to weigh so, in? Um, so shifting the driveway, I think just came down to um, some questions about the easement and easement rights and title. Um, however, I, I don't wanna get into that necessarily, but I will mention that in terms of additional lots, there is no change in frontage. There was a frontage variance granted for the lot in question um, that, that it's not, does not change at all by this amendment or modification. So, so as mentioned, this is this really is just changing the location, shifting the location of the driveway, and in that shift, trying to address the neighbors' concerns that they may have in terms of um, drainage and screening and some other items that we did not get at in the original subdivision that we are trying, attempting to get at here to um, try to just improve the, the you know, as much as we can from where we were an already approved subdivision. Okay, thank you, Kristen. Paul, does that answer your question? Uh, kind of, but mm -hmm. I'm still, uh... I don't get it as to why this is an important thing to shift this driveway and um, uh, have a basic unease about it, if you will. And that whole Muller Road development that's at the end of a, that long a driveway. Don't tell me about what's going on in other places in the town. Uh, I don't need to know that to, uh, uh, to affect my judgment on this particular project. And as I say, it became even more important to me when I tried to go down there and the road was completely blocked. And, and I developed a, 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 a deep concern because I said, what the heck would happen if something went boom on the other side of that big truck in the middle of the driveway? And that doesn't, I realize, bear on this particular movement of the driveway, but it's just, uh, I believe I have a right to vote as I want of course you do. <laughs> on this project. And uh, uh, I think you're wasting your time uh, trying to convince me otherwise. Although, uh, what the heck, I'm sitting here at home, I got my coffee, and you can <laughs> take all night if you want to. Okay, thank you, thank you for giving me an opportunity. All right, thank you, Paul. Um, Ernie, would you? Uh, like to no, no further questions. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, um, Bill. Daphne. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yeah, I took the opportunity just uh, again to go down there uh, because the neighbors uh, comment the last time about the uh, elevation uh, and the change of the driveway. So I, I kept that in mind. I, I drove by there and. Uh, it, it really, uh, again, taking a look at that particular uh, a piece of it, I was, I was saying that I, if you change that driveway, and I'm looking at elevations here, uh, in the comment, I think last time they talked about uh, putting in a retaining wall, and uh, the and now if you, you raise it up here, up on top of that hill, uh, then the water is going to change dramatically to where it was with the existing driveway that we approved. So I think if I would take into account the relocation of the driveway with regard to 
uh, the water runoff, I would say that's probably a, a, a negative uh, uh, issue with regard to this. So I would not be in favor of that due to the increased uh, location and up on the hill there. If, if you if you stand at the bottom of Cormier and, and look up that hill for the house, it's what twenty feet, and you're probably now going. It looks like from the uh, uh, from the elevations, it's from the existing one. It's one eighty five to one eighty nine, fairly flat. Uh, and now this one goes from 182 to 195. So you, you're up on a hill and you cut into the hill and and now you're going to have uh, some issues there. So thank you, Madam Chair. You're on mute, Barbara. Sorry, Mike Espeo, do you have any questions or comments? Uh, regarding the move, uh, no, Madam Chair, all set, thanks. Thank you, Brenda. I have nothing further to add. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Um, the only thing I want to do is I'd like to hear from the neighbors regarding the type of screening that they would prefer. I think that that's um, still unclear to me. So if, if um, I'd like to turn this over to any members of the audience that are neighbors that would like to weigh in and I'm specifically looking for that information about screening. I'm Mr. Chair, I'm Neil Russell, Sue Russell, 26 Cormier. Um, our lawyer, uh, Rachel Baim, is on the line. We have sent a letter two meetings ago regarding some aspects of this. Um, I believe we would like her to go over those points in that letter. I think they're relevant to the way that this vote is being considered. Um, we do have additional concerns about the landscaping. There are also several other abutters on the line. We'd like to have the chance to speak up. So I would like to sort of provide the 26 Cormier summary maybe at the end of those other remarks, if that's all right. That is okay, but I just want to caution everyone that what we're talking about is the shifting of the driveway. We're not talking about the whole project. We're really only discussing the shifting of the driveway tonight. Uh, the, that's, exactly the, that. that's exactly the major point that, that our council would like to address as the first point. Um, I think um, at, at the risk of misquoting, I would like to throw in here that um, the uh, town council opened his remarks with that exact point last time, saying specifically to the planning board, and I'm quoting to the best of my ability, you can choose to hearken back to what was before the planning board previously. That was his first, nearly first remark. That was followed by several other remarks as lawyers do, um, talking about various scenarios. However, it's our take and our lawyers take that all aspects of this plan are under consideration because this was filed as an amendment, not as a minor engineering change. So our lawyer would speak to that point if, if that's okay. Um, I think, why don't we hear from your lawyer very briefly just about that point? Um, I know you said she had a number of issues she wanted to discuss, but if we could just look listen to that point briefly first, and then we can get advice from our town council on that specific point. If we could handle it that way, I'd appreciate that. Sure. Thank you. No and also, Madam Chair, just, just to, to know our town council does have a hard stop right before seven. So um, just to try to have that flow, just be um, as concise as we can try to be. Thanks. Yes, please, okay. if you could just be as concise as possible before we lose our town council at seven. Thank you. I'll be, I'll be quick. Um, Madam Chair, member of the board, thank you for hearing from me. My name is Rachel Beam. As Neil pointed out, I represent a couple of the abutters tonight. And I think, um, you know, rather than going through my letter point by point, because you, you've had an opportunity to review it, I just want to say that um, from the beginning, my clients haven't had an opportunity to really face this head on. So the variance hearing that they never got notice of was really the beginning of this process. And so from then on, they have been sort of chasing um, this project and they've been opposed to it as soon as they received notice. And, you know, they didn't receive notice of the original hearing and this was filed as a major change to sort of cure that notice period. and all the abutters who have spoken about this project are opposed to it. And they have asked the applicant to reconsider their initial proposal in front of the zoning board, which was to have the driveway go out through Muller Road. 
it's just not appropriate the way it is designed. And whether this is a you know small shift in the driveway or whether it is a major shift in the driveway, the, the fact remains that they have challenged this project from the very beginning. It's not appropriate for a number of reasons. And I will let Smaller the right now. I will let the abutters speak about the you know conditions on the ground because I have not visited the property. I have, if you um, want to listen to it. <laughs> I have uh, I have looked at the plans, but I will let the abutters speak to the drainage and to the screening and what is allowed and not allowed as part of this right away. And the, the this right away is really just for access and utilities. It's not for garbage barrels. It's not for a mailbox. It's not for trees. It's not for cutting into the Russell's property to change the grade or to make drainage better. So there are major issues, and we have said it many, many times. And I will turn it over now to the Russells and to others who are on the line, and I appreciate you giving me a chance to speak. Thank you, but um, we can't turn it over to the Russells quite yet. Um, what I'm asking for now is for our town council to get, weigh in and give us advice, because we only have them for about 10 minutes. So I'd like to make sure we have a chance to hear from our town council. We, okay. Neighbors will have an opportunity to weigh in. It's just that we are in a time crunch. I Adam? understand, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So is the specific question uh, going back to uh, the reference to the scope of the board's review? My question for you is, what is it that we are supposed to be considering tonight? Are we considering only the shift of the driveway or because as, as um, I'm sorry, I forgot count the council's name for the Russells, but as council suggested that because this is an amendment that the entire project is now open for discussion and review. That's what I need to know from you. So I, I, I didn't hear council say that exactly, but I certainly heard council's clients say that, and, and maybe that is council's opinion as well. Um, I would disagree with that opinion. And I, um, th this is my unbiased advice. I have no specific connection to the applicant here or to the neighbors here. Um, the opinion I've consistently given to boards that I represent and frankly heard other, other town council give to boards that they represent, even when I'm representing private applicants before those boards, is that the scope of review on amendment is what is being amended. And of course, there is there is a, a gray area, aspects of the project that could be affected by that amendment. And so by way of example, um, if the shifting of the driveway um, doesn't simply change the grading of the site and where the driveway might be placed on the ground, but also has an impact to uh, the flow of stormwater and therefore the direction of stormwater runoff, maybe even the volume of stormwater runoff. If the relocation of the driveway has a greater impact to one dwelling versus another dwelling that might necessitate additional screening or buffering, um, those aspects, because they are directly related to, or for that matter, even somewhat indirectly related to the amendment that's before you, I think those are all within your purview. Those are all fair game for consideration. I am not of the opinion that by virtue of an applicant submitting a request to amend a subdivision, that suddenly the board can consider uh, or would be right to consider or that it would be affirmed if appealed and uh, questioned by a judge, consideration of a different aspect of the subdivision entirely unrelated in any way to the relocation of the driveway. If that were the case, then there would be a significant disincentive for any applicant to ever seek an amendment because they would be jeopardizing the very the very permit that they are seeking to amend. They could end up with something very different. And frankly, if the if the if the uh, composition of a board changes, if the opinions of board members simply change over time, they could essentially turn an approval into a denial simply by attempting to tweak something by way of an amendment. So. Again, I'm of the opinion that what's before you is the relocation of the driveway and any other aspects of the subdivision that would be directly or indirectly affected by the relocation of that driveway. So, I'm, Madam Chair, if I can just weigh in. Who is that? That's Rachel Baim for the Russells. Okay, yes, you may. So, as we pointed out in our letter, once the applicant decided to amend the plan, not as a minor modification, but as an amendment and re-notice. And we, we think that they did that in order to cure the notice issue that was initially there. 
once they decided to re-notice the board by choosing this path, the board um, under section 7.2.2, it says the planning board shall evaluate the proposed amendment in accordance with the approval criteria set out in section 6.6.4 and may approve uh, with condition approve with conditions or deny the proposed amendment giving the basis for denial in accordance with 6.6.3 so the board has the opportunity at that point once it is re-noticed to look at the entire application and that was set, you know that was set out in some detail in our letter okay thank you miss beam adam do you have anything else you want to say about that well, well, only that I think, and, and I say this uh, with great respect for Attorney Bain, but I, I think that um, the very quote she just recited, I think, tells the story. The board shall evaluate the proposed amendment. It doesn't say shall evaluate the proposed subdivision, shall evaluate the entire plan. You're evaluating the amendment to the plan. So I'm not going to speak to whether or not the noticing of the amendment cures any defect that may or may not have existed with the original noticing of the subdivision. If that was the intent of uh, attorney Levy, then that's for, for him to argue to the courts in the context of the pending litigation to the extent that notice becomes an issue. Um, but what I will say is that what's before the board is the amendment. And I continue to stand by my position that it's only the amendment that is, is ripe for consideration by the board. And, and again, aspects of the subdivision that might be affected by that amendment, but that it doesn't open up the entire subdivision plan. I appreciate that Burlington has opted to create, by way of regulation, a sort of multi-tiered process for seeking changes to subdivision plans. Most, most municipalities, in fact, almost every other municipality I represent, doesn't have anything called a minor engineering change. Um, you either seek a subdivision approval or you amend that subdivision approval. And when you seek an amendment, you follow the same process in terms of notice and publication that you would for the original the original subdivision, only the review is more circumscribed because it's limited to the amendment. The fact that Burlington has opted to provide an even simpler process for these quote unquote minor engineering changes, in my mind, that doesn't affect the reality that it's only the changes that are before you. Otherwise, again, the, the result would be absurd that no applicant would ever risk putting the whole subdivision at risk by virtue of amending you know, minor aspects of that subdivision, something not so minor as to only trigger a minor engineering change, something that would require a true amendment. But again, not, from my perspective, no applicant would ever seek such a change if the entire underlying subdivision were put at risk. Madam okay, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Um, actually, I'm mindful of the time and knowing that we're going to lose Adam very shortly. I want to see if any of my uh, fellow board members have questions for Adam on this before we lose him. We only have about five minutes. So. Just, but I had a quick question for him, but go ahead. Uh, okay, let me just quickly see if board members have any questions for Adam before he leaves. Speak up. Okay, hearing no one. All right, Mr. Russell, you had a question for our town council. Yes, uh, I would like him to directly address his own quote from the last meeting in which, and I'm, I hope I got the wording correct, you're on the record as saying to the planning board, you can choose to hearken back to what was before the board previously. So, un unfortunately, Madam Chair, I, I, I don't have uh, a memory. I, I, I have, I've had two, two meetings tonight for the past three nights, and I've had dozens over the past couple of weeks. So I can't say that I recall the exact quote that I might have made at a meeting a couple of weeks or more ago. Um, what I can say is that I learned a long time ago practicing municipal law not to tell board members how to vote. That's not my role. So certainly, if, if board members choose to hearken back to the original subdivision and um, you've already heard, I've already heard one of your board members say that they're convinced as to how they're going to vote and they're prepared to sit with, uh, he's prepared to sit with his coffee all night if that's what it takes. Um, I I'm not going to tell him how to vote tonight. That's not my role. Um, all I can tell you is, all I can give you is good legal advice as to my position with respect to um, the task that's before you, the appropriate scope of your review, and what you should consider in making a decision. If board members choose to consider other matters that in my mind might be beyond the appropriate scope of review, or in my mind might be subject to challenge if there were to be a challenge, 
that's that's a decision each member has to make for him or herself. Um, and I guess that's the best I can say. I stand by my position that what's before you is the amendment. And I'm confident that I made a statement to that effect a couple of weeks ago during your last uh, your last session of the public hearing. Thank you. Um, thank you, Attorney Costa. I have a question for you. I just want to, I think I know the answer, but I want to clarify. If this amendment is denied, am I correct in my understanding that all it does is move the driveway back to its original position? So, Madam Chair, that is my position now, um, or, uh, or my stance. Maybe I shouldn't use the word position. Uh, that's my stance. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if uh, uh, Attorney Bain or uh, her clients argue otherwise, because we've heard them say that the scope of your review, they believe, is the entire subdivision. And I think that um, to, to extend that a bit further, the suggestion would be that by virtue of reopening a public hearing or opening a new public hearing and attempting to cure any failures and notice that previously existed, I suspect that maybe their position, therefore, is that if the whole thing is again before you and the whole thing is denied, that the subdivision is denied and somehow the applicant has lost its original approval. I'll leave them, I'll leave that to them to argue before the courts. Um, my position is if this modification is denied, that the underlying decision stands subject to the appeal that is now underway. Okay, thank you. Um, okay. Attorney Bain, could you yeah. weigh in just on the question of if this is denied, this amendment is denied, uh -huh. what is your understanding of what happens next? Because my understanding was that the original, as, as, as Mr. Acosta said, that the original subdivision still stands, but the driveway would shift back to the original position. Could you address that, please? Yep, that, that is actually our understanding that if the amendment is denied, the original decision would stand. Now, just for everyone's edification, the initial plan didn't show the driveway within the right of way, um, or you know, it showed a 40 foot right of way where a 20 foot was there. So when we talk about whether this is a minor modification or a small shift in the driveway, we're you're actually talking about all, anything that is before the planning board. What's before the planning board is this driveway. And to the extent it shifts or it's in the right of way or not in the right of way or it's up against the hill or not up against the hill, that is basically the entire application because that's what's before the board initially and now. Mm -hmm. So if I'm understanding you, what you're saying is if this were to be denied, the driver would shift back to its original position, but the subdivision um, approval would still be in place. And I understand also that you are appealing that subdivision approval, correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And is it your client's position that they would prefer that this driveway remain in its original position? for whatever their reasons may be. Uh, I, will, I will let them speak to that. I don't think they like the driveway in either position <laughs> in this direction, but I will let them address that, whether they have a preference as to the original or the secondary. I think the original one was actually not in the right of way. So it's, it wouldn't I guess what I'm asking you is, does this shift of the driveway in your mind, impact your appeal of the original subdivision? Regardless, uh, whichever you, whichever the, the board decides, we will appeal either the original or the amended. Either way, it's in litigation. So um, to us, in that respect, it doesn't really matter whether it's in the original position or this position. Does that okay, answer your I question? I think it does. Thank you. Um, Madam, Madam Chair, I have a question. It's Joe. Um, I was going to bring it over to the board next. So go ahead, Joe, take it away. Oh, sorry. All right. So, so a couple of questions. One was, uh, Adam, do you have any case law on that in particular, whether the amendment <clears throat> reverts back to the beginning of the process or whether it revert, reverts back to the approval? Uh, is the case law that you know of? Number one. And number two, I heard Adam 
speak of a, the amendment in, real, in, in terms of, a, of curing, curing a notice requirement. What did you mean by that? So, Madam Chair, through you, and I'm going to speak rather quickly because I, I do have to drop off momentarily. So, addressing those sort of in, in reverse order. So, mm -hmm. I wasn't the one that raised the curing of the notice issue. I was simply responding to a, a comment made by attorney uh, Blame that, that she believed that that was part of the rationale for the submittal of uh, an amendment um, and, and a re-noticing of uh, abutters, that it was meant to cure insufficient notice that may have occurred during the original subdivision. I think that one of the claims being made um, in, in, the, in the pending appeal is that there was a lack of notice or insufficient notice or incomplete notice to all the parties that would have been entitled to receive notice pursuant to the subdivision control law when this project was originally, this subdivision was originally brought to the board. And so uh, attorney uh, Bame's suggestion was that this is uh, this was done to cure that, uh, that error. Um, I was simply speaking to that and saying that I'm not sure that re-noticing or noticing an amendment would cure an error associated with the original subdivision, but that's neither here nor there. It's not really something that's for the board to consider. And frankly, it's I, the good news is it's not something I have to opine on because it's it, it's not something that is for me to consider either. It's between the private parties and the litigation. Um, I do know that there have been reference uh, references in cases, certainly in the context of the zoning act and special permits and variances to subsequent amendments and the scope of review of those subsequent amendments being limited to the amendment and not the entire underlying special permit or variance. Um, I can't cite the specific cases. I think there may be cases in the subdivision context as well. If the board is looking for some support for that, I can certainly provide that. Obviously not on the spot and not at tonight's meeting, but I can get that information to the board for sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I would be interested in that information, Madam Chair. So, I, you know, just one member, but I'm okay. all set. Okay, thank you. Um, do any other board members have any last questions for Attorney Costa before we lose him? Anyone? Okay. Um, Adam, thank you. I'm sorry we took you over your allotted time. I appreciate your being here. I think we're probably going to have additional questions for you offline. Yes. Um, but I appreciate what you you know the time you spent with us tonight. Thank you. I appreciate you you accommodating my schedule tonight, and uh, we'll talk soon. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think probably the next thing I would like to hear from I'd like to hear more from some of the neighbors that have come. Um, to talk specifically about the shift of the driveway and about screening. Thank you, Madam. Uh, this is a 30 Cormier Road neighbor uh, abutting the um, expected uh, projected driveway. Uh, just have a question first. Uh, I sent a letter to uh, the planning director, uh, Ms. Kastner. Was she able to communicate the letter to all the board members? When was that particular? We've received a few. So when was that letter sent? Um, it was like a week ago, 10 days ago. A week ago. Um, basically, I was I was explaining a number of points why this is a bad idea from our point of view, from the neighborhood point of view. But I also uh, want to answer your question first that you kept asking okay. for a couple of times in the last two meetings. Uh, would okay. that uh, shifting the driveway to its original uh, idea of the applicant, will that be okay to Russells and others? Uh, I will tell you, moving that, uh, that's that's being litigated as you know in the court. Right. The, right. There is no uh, right of uh, for forty foot driveway cutting through more on my property side as opposed to the current uh, uh, current uh, Russell's property side right now, which is being discussed. So that litigation will stand, and we there is no proper uh, documentation to claim for that driveway, which will still be litigated. Um, I think that's my statement to you. I'm equally more more opposed to that view because it's going to cut through my property uh, right in the middle of between the trees. So, but still, uh, that's not being discussed right now. I will restrict myself to the some of the common observations that I will bring before the planning board. Uh, basically, our property sits on a lot which is level with pond. So any drainage issues uh, that are going to be rising because of the shift in the driveway to um, into the hill 
is still within 30 feet of our foundation, any structural changes that you allow by approving this driveway uh, in the current current path as being requested will still affect my driveway basement water conditions. My patio will get flooded. So any damages that occur subsequent to this will be litigated uh, and the town planning board will be held responsible for any damages that occur in my basement because of the structural modifications that are going to come out of this decision if how this driveway either either location uh, so the, it will be litigated and I, as i said many times in the past this driveway is a bad idea from a neighborhood point of view and it uh, it affects the wildlife it it increases the traffic it it destroys the property of our house <laughs> And there's a beautiful pond there, and it's a negative, negative from every aspect of the, the neighborhood. And there are many neighbors who who share that opinion, and it's going to create uh, eventually, not now, maybe not now, maybe five years later, maybe ten years later, a cut through to the shopping mall uh, from the Cormier side. People will level, people eventually will start walking, biking, all kinds of things will happen, and there will be food traffic eventually opening up losing privacy for both Russell's and the Varda family, which I represent. Okay, thank you. So just, I just wanna make sure I understand, on this particular amendment on the shifting of the driveway, do you have a preference between its original location and the location that it has shifted to? No, we oppose, we oppose the driveway from the Cormier side okay. total. Ourselves and one of the families oppose this. And we will we will take legal action one way or the other if, if it is going to go forward. Any structural okay. modification. Okay, I understand. I just wanted to know if there was a preference, but you're saying neither one is preference. No. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, okay, are there any other neighbors present who want to weigh in on this before? As do we, are we seeing any other neighbors that want to speak I believe on the DeAngelis yes. were on the line, uh, 24 Cormier. Joe, are you there? Yes, I am. And I'm looking at the plan that's on my television right now. And I'm trying to find out where I am in this plan. And if you, if that um, little spot on the bottom part is supposed to be the pond it's in the wrong place that's number one number two we're opposed to the whole thing of uh exist trying to put Cormier road wherever they want because it's just not feasible okay thank you sir um now, where are there the any pond? Papers? I'm sorry. I'm that is sorry, not where the pond is. If that's the pond, if that is supposed to be the pond, and that, that, and that's why I, I'd like either someone that uh, can explain what this whole thing means to me. Uh, oh. From what I see, um, the existing um, plan that they want to do. Or the amendment, whatever you want to call it, is not in the right place. That pond, as I said before, if it rains two or three days steady, I get water in my basement. How can I get water in my basement if the pond is way over there? Okay, um, Kristen, could you? Do do you know sure, what it is so, that um, Brady's going to bring up at? the uh, larger plan? So if you just okay. bear, so Thanks. since this plan just dealt with the landscaping. Madam, so Madam, LaRue, Madam LaRue, this is Scott Martin. I live on Cormier Road, town meeting member in Prefix 6-7. So I live in 6 Cormier, and I think where Joe is talking about, if he lives at 24 on that previous map, Cormier Road stops. And his house is just after that on the left. So am I understanding that his his home is not visible on this map? It's on Cormier too. I believe that it, it, his house is on Cormier He's and it's just Cormier down the too. street from where that plan stops. Yeah, that plan was zoomed in to really focus on the driveway, but if Correct. it's a yes. larger plan, um, you can get a little bit more of a sense of um, where things are, but to the the point, 
uh, Mr. Martin, you, uh, I think, just yeah. So the pond can be seen um, kind of behind the proposed lot in thirty. We we here. Um, we we really can't see. It's very small. Yeah, I'm just wondering. See where if see where Cormier is in the upper right hand corner. Yeah. And the very top edge of Cormier where it ends. That's about where twenty four is. No, he's over to the right. I wonder, Brady, if you could. I know uh, with a lot of plans coming up, could you just give us a um, a screen like a map view, just a Google map view, just so we can get some orientation, and then we can go back to the plans. This guy is over here. Thank this you. Guy. He's representing twenty. He's representing this guy. Okay, so. Where's here? Over oh, there's to the right. But it's on the, this is the road. It's. So if you take a look at this plan, 108 Muller is, you can see that lot. If you go, um, Brady, if you can take your cursor and go direct kind of up to uh, kind of north, northeast through those two, that's, that is the roughly kind of the where. So 30 is where the cursor is now, 26 is further back. So is 24, the house right in front of 26, is that correct? Uh, this is Neil Russell. Yes, the, the house immediately to the north. Okay. Uh, right there. Uh, there. Yes. Okay. That's where I was saying. Okay, thanks. I just want to make sure we were all And their the little page. diagram, their little diagram ended right there. So, their Madam road Chair. Ended right there. Okay. Ma Madam Chair, this is the 30 Cormier neighbor. I just want a quick point. Every time I've seen this map of the relocate the new subdivision planning, uh, it doesn't show the pond boundary pond boundaries. And as you know, Burlington property, um, you know, the, the the area of accessing pond is completely on my side. And the, if you look at the uh, Christian's, uh, you know, um, cursor. Uh, the trees are sub abutting the water are completely within my property line. I just want to make sure whatever the applicant is showing the maps here, they're not accurate. I'm actually going to go to survey done. Um, okay, do we have a plan that shows the pond on it? I'm asking Brady and Kristen. Um, Yes, we do. I guess it, the question, further question is, do we have a map that we can put up that it's very clear to the whole audience exactly where the, the pond is? I'm not sure, um, just because we haven't highlighted it. Um, but uh, Brian Levy, it's, are you speaking? You're on mute. The attorney Levy for the applicant. I'm not sure if he could help us. Uh, I'm right. sorry, I've been talking, I'm talking to myself. So, yes, there's another plan which is very similar to the one that you've been looking at, which is the aerial view. And it also does show the um, the pond. So the purpose of this um, view is a little bit different, just to focus in on the driveway and that you can see the shift. But there's several plans that show the pond that are in the record. There you go. There we go. There we go. Great, thank you. Thank you, both of you. Right. Does this plan help to answer some any of your questions to the, the previous speaker? It doesn't still show me how much land is, is clearly uh, because right now I do have access completely on the bottom side of the pond uh, next to the applicant's property. There is a bit of strip of land that goes and I do walk in that space and there are woods that are going to be apparently cleared by the applicant if it gets approved and that will be within you know 30 feet or 25 feet of the pond, of pond water level. Um, so, so again, Madam Chair, the, the reason where I think we're looking at this 
um, is because the abutter at 24 Cormier, Mr. DeAngelis had commented that he didn't see the pond or the pond was in the wrong place on the plan. And I think that we've cleared that up now. I agree. We can all see the pond now. That's very helpful. Thank you. Are there any other neighbors that have um, that would like to weigh in? I specifically need to hear from people about screening and about drainage, what drainage they're looking for. Madam Chair, Neil Russell. Thank you. Go ahead, Neil. Yes. Um, the um, Matter of the drainage, I briefly say that we did attend the CONCOM meeting last week. Uh, we were rather disappointed that they were shown a satellite photo without any um, elevation changes on it. And there was no discussion of the cutting into the hill or the potential change in grade on my property or the grading of the driveway at that meeting until we spoke up and requested that the new plan be shown. So we were rather disappointed about the way that was handled. Um, at any rate, it's very clear that a certain amount, maybe several cubic yards of material would need to be removed along the right of way and into our property potentially in order for this new driveway to be created. Our understanding is a permeable asphalt driveway requires less than a 5% grade. The current slope by my trigonometry calculations, now I'm not talking about the length, I'm talking about the width of the driveway. It slopes approximately 15 degrees at its steepest point near the large tree. And it's close to 12, 10 to 12 degrees throughout approximately 100 feet of that new proposed location. So that they're going to be cutting into the side of the hill that's there two to four feet high and removing that material. So clearly some amount of grading or retention or it is clearly going to affect my property, the drainage and the slope of my current property. That slope was created by town approval when we took possession of this property. We modified this area. The applicant approved those changes when we did it and the uh, now seem to be seeking to reverse those changes. Now, since we made those changes in 2011 and 2012, uh, we've said before that area of this right of way used to flood regularly. We have not observed anything more than a small puddle of water there in the last eight and a half to nine years that we've been here since those changes were made. We're extremely concerned that digging into the hill and changing the grade, removing all that soil and grass, uh, no matter how permeable this driveway is, is going to create runoff problems primarily for Mr. Verada, but potentially for us and also potentially for um, Mr. DeAngelis. There is some sort of an aquifer underneath this area and digging into this area very well may disturb that aquifer. So that's the drainage issue from our standpoint and the modification to the property. As far as the screening goes, we don't want any screening. We never asked for any screening. We don't know why people keep bringing this up. We enjoy our view to the pond. Putting more plants, shrubs and trees along this area is only gonna create maintenance issues. It's gonna create future disputes. Our understanding is the permeable pavement requires an extensive list of maintenance issues, including clearing ice and snow regularly, as well as leaves and other debris. And this will only lead, planting more material in this area will only lead to more disputes about keeping that driveway clear and potentially causing more runoff. So we're totally against any kind of screening, any additional plantings here. Um, so, uh, that, that's, I think, addressing your two specific questions. Thank you. May I ask a question? Um, where you talked about the hill where you thought there would need to be some of that hill excavated. On whose property is that hill where you are concerned about them digging out? So the, our, our entire property was regraded from our house down to the edge of the right of way, which is our property. To be specific, again, they have a right of way to pass across here. They do not have a right of way to modify this without our approval. And harkening back to the 2011 regrading plan, this was approved by the town and the neighbor to put that material in here. So. 
removing that is going to change the grade of my existing hill here and or require a retaining wall. As I said, if you look closely at the elevations on here, there's a minimum of two feet material going to be taken out from my hill. This is my property. It is within potentially, we'd have to survey this the right of way, of course, but from a, as my understanding, from a legal standpoint, that is my property and they cannot modify the grade without our permission. Madam Chair, may I be heard? Um, in a moment, Mr. Levy, um, I would like to ask um, Kristen a question regarding uh, Mr. Russell's statement that, that they would need to change the grade on his property within the right of way and that we aren't allowed, that that's not allowed. Can, do we, can you weigh in on that? I, I, I need to understand. Um, yes. So as I mentioned previously um, that they, after the Conservation Commission and, and some of these grade questions, as well as re in review of the um, engineers uh, review of the grade and, and submission uh, of the report uh, about that, um, we wanted to ensure and therefore condition that there are any construction and or grading associated with this driveway must occur within areas that are under the control, uh, direct control, or have they have rights within an easement um, to build this driveway. So to, to be clear that there's n they can't do anything on the outside of the easement and all of the that land should be marked in the field to make sure that happens. Right. Um, I, I understand ask, that, but um, my question is more, how much are they allowed to do within the easement? I understand there's an easement and they can, they therefore have the right to pass, but do they have the right to excavate and change the grade within the easement? So you still go back to the general um, is the, the general regulation of that you can't per, you can't create more runoff from a property or improvement to your property to the neighboring um, lots pre and pre imposed conditions. So if if in fact their driveway construction was providing more runoff to the neighbors than obviously in the unimproved condition, then they would need to mitigate it. And that's why they're you're the signs the permeable driveway. And that's why I mentioned if um, on the downward slope toward 30, if they potentially needed to put additional um, crushed stone or other drainage that um, we may entertain and or the um, Conservation Commission may also um, discuss through the, out their NOI. But I also would, um, they, uh, um, the engineer Al Nelson went out to take a look at this and do some investigation, and I think it might be beneficial for the group to hear um, his investigation um, after hearing from the Russells and some of the, the issues that were identified. Um, but I'm not sure if Attorney um, Levy, if I, I know you had a time of constraint as well, I'm not sure um, if that. Okay, well, um, no, if we hear from Attorney Levy and then hear from the engineer. Yes, so uh, Madam Chair, First, I think we need to talk about real things that are happening here, real facts. We have submitted a drainage report and grading plans. Those have been in the record for a couple of weeks. Nobody, nobody has elected to challenge them by filing competing plans, creating real questions by real engineers about real facts. All we have is uh, anecdotes here and a supposition. This area previously had a driveway on it. We are reestablishing that driveway in essence. We are perfectly within our right. We have an easement over this area. We are entitled to make reasonable use of that easement area. The cut and fill here is two feet. There is no retaining wall. And uh, the Russells are several feet above the driveway. They're in no danger of any drainage flowing uphill unless water is gonna flow uphill. And the uh, calculations that have been provided uh, that have been before this board for at least a couple of weeks, maybe three or four weeks now, show that the pervious pavement with this stone underneath it has excess capacity to handle any stormwater from that driveway. So the real facts are 
There's no issue here with respect to drainage. There's no issue here with respect to grading. And there's no issue here with respect to my client's right to make a reasonable use. And this is certainly a reasonable use of the easement to which it is entitled. Thank you. And, and, and also, Your Honor, I will, uh, Your Honor, <laughs> Madam Chair, I will add that all of this. You can call me Your Honor anytime you want. <laughs> all, all of this, all of this is going to be reviewed, must be reviewed and approved as the Conservation Commission said in its decision in the notice of intent. So we're gonna be drilling into all these details with the Conservation Commission. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Attorney Levy. Is, is the engineer here? Alan? Yes, right here. Good evening. Hi, um, can you specifically address the issue that Mr. and Mrs. Russell have brought forward regarding the grading of their property and how this would affect their property and change the flow of water. Yes, I'd be glad to. Um, as uh, Attorney Levy uh, suggested before, there used to be a gravel driveway in the same location we're proposing it. The only difference is, is that we're not proposing in to restore the same elevation of the previous driveway, which the Russells were familiar with, and the Russells covered over and filled in. If we were to retrieve that same grade, there would be a need for a retaining wall, as the Russells would um, and, and, uh, assert it. The design we have before the board is to put it at a grade that splits the difference of the existing grade so basically we cut in two feet into the hill within the 20 foot easement, grade a 2% cross section grade across the driveway, and then less than two feet to slope down. So we're going to basically create a shelf in that hill to create the driveway. So the question comes in, what happens to the drainage runoff? Well, we're not changing the direction any water is flowing. If anything, we're intercepting it with a shelf, and then that shelf is made out of uh, permeable pavement, which means basically you put a, as if you would had a sponge on the kitchen table that had the abrasive side that you clean the pots with on the top, and you pour water through it, and it gets absorbed in the sponge below. We calculated the volume of that stone sandwich, if you would have, below the previous pavement, and it would handle anything up to and beyond a 25-year storm. So basically what we're saying is that uh, we're going to improve on the drainage situation that's there now. Instead of having a steep slope that's graded with grass that allows for a faster flow of water, we intercept that, slow it down at the driveway, put it into the ground, and allow it to recharge okay. the uh, aquifer that serves the uh, pond. And as far as the grades differences, the highest point of the new driveway would be elevation 93. The Russells are at 206. The uh, Baradas are at 188, which they've been since the very beginning. And incidentally, when their house was built there, there was an existing driveway. The gravel driveway was there when their house was constructed. Uh, about the same time that that lot was created, the Baradas lot was created in 2004, I believe, uh, no, 2006. Uh, that's when the planning board required to, a 40-foot right-of-way to be shown on the plan as a condition of the subdivision approval. And that's where the subdivision approval in 2006 actually created a 40-foot easement. Question now is, you know, who owns the easement? And that's, that's up to the attorneys to sort out. But as far as the grading, and the changes in the grades, yes, the Russells did change the grade and they did change the drainage characteristics. As far as the changes of grade that we're proposing, we're changing the grade, not to the original driveway grade that they filled in, but to a higher grade that splits the grade cross-sectional wise into the hill. So it's only less than two feet of a slope into the hill, a 2% grade across the driveway, and then less than two feet down on the lower side at the worst case scenario. Okay. The rest right, of it would level you. off. I hope Madam that- uh, Chairman, can I ask a question of the engineer? 
Yes, please. Um, can uh, uh, can you weigh in on the comment about the percent of grade and perm and the comment that was made, the percent of grade and permeable, um, the effectiveness of the permeable driveway? And then the second question, or actually comment, I want to clarify, is in 2006 when these two lots <laughs> were considered under the planning board, the planning board did not require that there be a right of way here. The applicant wanted to preserve rights to Columbia Road. And from at least my memory, and I don't want to quote, it was a long time ago, but we wanted to make sure that what was being discussed was accurately shown on the plan. Um, so just to clear up, it wasn't the planning board required the right of way. Um, it was a discussion as part of the subdivision approval at the time. Um, so anyway. Thank you, Kristen. I, I, I know that the plan but it, before it got approved, it had to show a 40 foot right of way as to who requested it. I don't recall, but I know that it got recorded with that 40 foot right of way back in 2006. And that's why we showed it currently. Okay, um, so can you re respond to the, there was a comment from the Russells about the effectiveness of a permeable, permeable pavement in a driveway and as it relates to the, the grade and pitch of the driveways. Do you have a yes. response no, to that? Yeah, that, that's a good question. That's a very good question, and it's a legitimate question. And that's one of the reasons we made a normal roads would have a crown, a, a, basically a 2% crown, quarter of an inch of the foot on a normal cross section, which would crown the road one way or the other. And so the grade would be dictated by the slope of the grade of the road as to the effectiveness. What we have here is that we've created a hyper elevation on one side for lack of a better term, to create a 2% cross-sectional grade. So when the theoretical raindrop hits the edge of the driveway, it follows across the driveway, not down the driveway, but across the driveway to 2% grade, and hence gets the uh, effectiveness of the permeal pavement. Madam Chair, this is Rachel Baim. I just have a question for the engineer. Can I ask? Can I ask a question? You're on mute, Barbara. Sorry, I was. I'm sorry, I was on mute. Please go ahead. Okay, um, Ms. P. Nelson, I just had a quick question. So you had um, initially done some work based on the 2006 plan. Is that correct? Uh, we did plans in 2004 that created the 20 foot easement, and we did plans in 2006 that created the lot at number 30. Okay, and then you went you went back to the property recently um, and spoke to the Russells. Was there a change, a difference in your opinion as to the drainage from what you initially saw based on the old plan and what you saw when you came out most Is there, recently? Was there a change in the drainage? Was there, yeah, was there a change in your opinion as to the drainage? Any well, drainage issues? I would, I would characterize, if I could answer the question. Yeah. Um, I didn't analyze the drainage. What we did analyze were the elevations. So we did take a look at see what the changes in topography were because it was reported to us that the Russells had in fact filled in uh, a driveway and an old foundation where the garage was on the property. So what we did is we went out to take elevations to verify what the Russells had done. So we did verify that the topography had changed in spots out of the property at their property line hadn't changed, but the grade going up to their house had in fact changed because they built a new house and they relocated the old driveway to the current driveway location that they have on the hill. We did okay. not analyze the drainage, but we did analyze the topography and we did analyze and report on the differences in elevation that were partially up the hill on their property. Okay, and did the recommendation to the applicant change after you reviewed the property again recently or, or not? What's that again, please? Um, did your view uh, or your recommendations to the applicant change um, based on your initial review with the old plan and your most recent review? Um, no, the, basically the, we stood by the original design because we were going with a, a permeable pavement. Um, 
what has been used in times past is that you use permanent pavement, uh, impervious pavement, and put a stone shoulder on it. Well, uh, it was recommended to us to uh, use the uh, porous pavement, and that's what we recommended uh, before we did the elevations, and it's the same recommendation we're using after the elevation. So it's the net effect is the same results as far as the positive effect on the drainage impact. Okay, thank you. I just had a question for Mr. Levy also. Um, you had mentioned that the plans were, um, had been submitted to the board and that nobody had challenged them. Can you tell me more about whether the- Actually, you know, I'm sorry, <laughs> Levy, I, I need to bring this back to the board. This is kind of getting, um, off into left field. Can I, so let me, I'm taking this back for now. I want to talk to my fellow board members for a few minutes. I want to find out if the board members feel comfortable voting on this tonight or if they feel they need further information. I know we've been around this a few times and it's still quite murky to me, but I don't know how my fellow board members feel and if they want to move forward with tonight or if we want to request more information and take it under advisement and then we convene at our next meeting. So I'm gonna ask each one of you in turn if you wanna vote on this, if you feel comfortable voting on this now or if you need more information. Joe? Well, I, I just I just think that the one thing I would like to see is uh, town council was going to get some information based on that uh, the amendment versus you know the uh, whether whether it reverts back to the uh, application point or whether it reverts back to the uh, so I you know he said he he thought he okay. would be able to get some case law or something, or, or, or maybe not case law, but references within cases that would back up his his position on it, um, because I think that's a, an important position here, uh, you know, for us to contemplate when we make this decision, you know. So I would like to see that, but that's, you know, again, that's my position on it. Okay, so you would rather not vote tonight and wait to hear back from our town council. All right, um, uh, Member Raymond, the same question. Yes, as usual, I agree with Joe. The other uh, thing that I want to make sure is that any neighbors that wanted to uh, comment on this or make a presentation have been allowed to do that. Uh, well, we've, we've been allowing everyone to comment, and and I've been asked to, asking if there are others. So I think so far we haven't we have done that. Um, but I understand you would like to wait as well, Member Cavino. Um, the, what I uh, in in the uh, staff report, uh, the new piece of information I see is from the Conservation Commission, and John Keeley seems to say the Conservation Commission supports the shift of the driveway, and that's what we're discussing. Further away from the pond, they did express concerns about grading, drainage, and tree planting associated with the driveway, which I've heard expressed by the neighbors more, uh, on numerous occasions. And, and they also say they will, however, fully review drainage and grading as part of their notice of intent permit review. And um, I believe that I would be prepared to vote tonight as long as our decision can contain the language that uh, um, basically whatever the Conservation Commission, who are, who are the experts on on grading and wildlife disturbance, et cetera, uh, that whatever they decide is included in the decision after the fact. Okay, thank you, Member Cavino. Member Gaffney, are you comfortable voting on this tonight? We need more information. Uh, I think the only thing I would say is if another member uh, needs more information to uh, vote, then I think, you know, we, we wait for that. Okay, Member Espeo. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'm comfortable voting tonight. Um, it's my understanding that no matter which way it goes, the original decision um, of the subdivision will stand. And I do hear the concerns of the neighbors and I definitely empathize with them and I listen from what we heard from town council, wherever which way we vote, it's already decided. And if uh, the neighbors do choose to challenge that, it, it is well within their rights. But for the issue at hand, 
I am more than comfortable voting on just the position of the driveway because that's all that's in front of us today. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Member Espeo. Member Rappaport. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd also like to hear from Council and, and, um, and see what he has to say. Um, I, I think, you know, we've heard a lot of information, but I think, um, you know, understanding um, what Council has to offer us uh, is important. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Given that, it sounds like the majority of the board wants more information from Council. Um, so I think that it's probably best if we continue this matter and reach out to Temple Council and probably have an executive session to discuss this prior to our next meeting. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to continue this matter to the planning board meeting of November 5th, 2020. Second. Second. Um, can I make a just quickly with um, so COVID is throws everything out of the loop in terms of statutory deadlines, but I at least like to pretend they're all in. Mm -hmm. um, the statutory deadline in, in order in terms of just making the motion, the statutory deadline would be up on the October 29th. I guess I would ask that you make a motion to continue this matter and extend the statutory, mutually extend the statutory deadline at least till, you know, the Monday after that. So what is it, Monday? Um, uh, 5th, 6th, November 2nd. Ninth, November well, what we meet on the fifth, so. Go so move to extend the deadline to November fifth. Uh, we need to go past that to file. So let's say the tenth. Yeah, the tenth. Second. Second. Thank you, Chairman Larue. Yes. Vice Chairman Impemba. Yes. Member Clerk Raymond. Yes. Member Cavino. Yes. Member Gaffney. Yes. Member Espejo. Yes. Member Rappaport. Yes. Okay, thank you. Then um, now that we've done that, I think we need to vote to delay, to continue this till the November 5th. Okay. Yeah, Didn't we that. just do that? We just continued. We just can. Oh, you did them all together as one. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, well, it's a little messy, but all right. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. So I, we I need to write a letter. Okay. I understand that this is um, Kristen. very confusing and contentious, and I understand that everyone's um, emotions are run very high, and I appreciate the very measured and controlled discussion that we've had. Um, I appreciate how respectful everyone has been, and I I feel for you. I understand this is a very difficult situation, and, and please understand that we're also trying to do our best for you, but we need to understand all the issues involved more clearly. So thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all. all right. Have a good night. Thank you. So as we move on, I'm trying to think where we're going to. Um, we never did announcements. Why don't we do announcements? <laughs> All right. So those of you that are still watching, we have announcements. Um, the mandatory water ban is still in effect. Um, and please see um, the town website for more detailed information. Um, you're not allowed to use your sprinkler system, essentially. Um, and now to all the voting deadlines, it's a um, federal election. And so there's lots of dates. Um, early in-person voting um, is happening um, on October 17th through the 30th. It begin, It's from 8.30 a.m. until 1 p.m. at Grandview Farm. Um, there are additional dates on evenings and weekends. And I would encourage everybody to check the town calendar for more details. Um, there'll be a Board of Health drive through flu clinic, which is super important this year, um, October 17th from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. at the Burlington High School. Um, note about that is that the senior vaccine is not available at this flu clinic. Um, it's just the regular, um, the regular um, dose. Um, voter registration deadline is October 24th, um, and the deadline to request a ballot by, a ballot by mail is October 28th by 5 p.m. at um, and that's at the town clerk's office. Um, and then as always, election day is November 3rd. 
um, and polls open at 6 a.m. and close at 8 p.m. and it's polling is at the Burlington High School. Thank you, Liz. So um, I think we are moving on now to page 11. Was this item though, um, 75 Middlesex Turnpike, Tina Body Work, was this continued? This item was continued. I did receive an email from the applicant um, later on in the day. It did not make it into the beginning of the staff report, but um, I think we can all just, you know, if you want to take a motion about it, that's fine. We can take a motion and it's my understanding that the building department still had questions regarding the layout and so we're waiting to hear back from them. So mm -hmm. if I may have a motion to continue this, I would appreciate it. Uh, can you just read officially for the record what oh, it is? Of course. <laughs> this is item 7A, public hearing, application for approval of a special permit pursuant to section 4.2.6.20.1, massage therapy of the zoning bylaws, 75 Middlesex Turnpike, Burlington Mall. Tina Body Work is the applicant. Motion to continue okay. this matter to the planning board meeting of November 5th, 2020. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. Thank you. Chairman LaRue. Yes. Vice Chairman Impamba. Yes. Member Clark Raymond. Yes. Member Covino. Yes. Member Gaffney. Yes. Member Espejo. Yes. Member Rappaport. Yes. Okay, thanks everyone. Next on our agenda is um, minutes. Uh, can I back up just quickly? I'm sorry. What we yes. have on the agenda. Um, so that item was item 8C, 8F. We didn't continue. 8F is the continued public hearing application for approval of a definitive subdivision plan 4 and 5 Redmond Street, Murray Hills Incorporated. Um, they oh. have requested that this be continued to the meeting of November 19th. Um, okay. And I apologize that just didn't land in the uh, okay. staff report. So can That's someone fine. make that motion to continue that matter till November 19th? So move. So wait. Yeah. Second. Second. So then Liz, I need roll call. Chairman LaRue. Yes. Vice Chairman Pemba. Yes. Member Clerk Raymond. Yes. Member Covino. Yes. Member Gap. Yes. Member Espejo. Yes. Member Rappaport. Yes. Okay, thank you. So um, next we have minutes and um, we've our, our team has been doing a great job keeping up with minutes. So th thank you, Don. Thank you, Brady. This is wonderful. We have minutes for September 17th, 2020 and October 3rd, 2020. Um, hopefully we can vote on all of them tonight. Is there anyone who cannot vote on these meeting minutes tonight? All right, then I'm ready for a motion to accept. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to accept the minutes of September 17th, 2020. Second. Chairman LaRue. Yes. No, I should have done them both. Just Vice Chairman Impemba. Yes. Member Clark Espejo. Yes. Member Covino. Uh, yes. Member Raymond. Yes. Member Gaffney? Yes. Member Rappaport? Yes. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion and apologize for not including both in the <laughs> last motion uh, to accept the okay. minutes of October 3rd, 2020. Second. Chairman LaRue? Yes. Vice Chairman Impemba? Yes. Member Clark Frank? Yes. Member Camino. Yes. Member Espejo. Yes. Member Gap. Yes. Member Rappaport. Yes. Okay, thanks everyone. Okay, we have another item for discussion on our agenda, item 10A, which is a discussion regarding Terry Ave lot release. Kristen, can you give us a quick update? Sure, um, for those of you that have been on the board, for quite some time. Here and there, um, we find these very, very, very old things that 
when people do um, their you know due diligence and research on lots and title and other things, find out that back in 1975 we didn't do something. Um, so this is one of them. 18 Teria for some reason was never. No one can find, nor was it. Doesn't appear to be at the registry. The planning board motion to release this particular lot from the covenant at the time. So that is what this is. Um, I actually, if you don't mind, um, if someone wants to deputize me to read the motion, um, I have a, uh, just a minor correction. That's just I'm easier. So deputize you. Please go ahead. <laughs> um, let me just get to it. Uh, okay. Um, so if you're all set, so then the motion, the planning board certifies that the requirements for public improvement specified in the conditional approval covenant recorded in Middlesex South Registry of Deeds on June 27, 1975 in book one, uh, one, two, eight, one, eight, page 408. Um, uh, and shown on the definitive subdivision plan entitled plan of proposed grading at Terry Ave in Burlington, Mass recorded with said deed um, book 12818 page 408 said lots are hereby released from the restrictions as to the sale and building specified herein lots designated on the plan as follows as lots 8 and 14. that's the motion second. so moved second thank you chairman larue yes vice chairman and Pemba. Member Clark Raymond. Yes. Member Cavino. Yes. Member Espejo. Yes. Member Gaffney. Yes. Member Rappaport. Yes. All right. Okay. Well, if we can do this well, we can wrap up by eight o'clock. Do any members have any other business that they need to bring forward at this time? Ms. Member Gaffney. Yeah, just since you're on uh, Terry Ave, uh, I was walking by there the other day and we talked about this the last time with uh, 24 Terry Ave, with there was no sidewalks, not even started. It, and uh, you said there wasn't an occupancy permit uh, for the addition there. I, I walked by there and they've got a, something's going up there where the addition was. They've got a video screen up there. So if, if it's, there's no occupancy permit, there's something uh, up there anyway. So uh, again, I just, Without that sidewalk uh, started, I don't know how they can be be up there with them, some sort of video screen up there. So this is my comment on 24 of Terry Ave and the uh, Thank sidewalk. You. Thank you. So uh, I just wanted to give an update on that. Um, Brady and I have been working with the applicant um, condition. The um, the condition read that they need to construct the sidewalk up until the 100 foot buffer as well as three trees and one street light. Um, and if they were not going to do it prior to the CO, um, they need to fully bond the cost. And right now we are trying to figure out what that cost may be. Um, so we're underway in, we're in process trying to um, get that moving forward. So thank you. Okay, thank you, Kristen. Um, Ernie, go ahead. Yeah, yeah just one uh, quick, and, and it's only a comment, uh, and that mm -hmm. is I thought uh, the uh, Duke Guterres company deserves mm -hmm. some uh, credit and praise for the landscaping that they have con continuously put at the corner of uh, Wayside and Cambridge Street. Looks very nice. I happened to oh. go by there the other day with my wife, and and. I commented on it and she agreed. And if she agrees, you know. Uh, and actually, even across the street at um, um, what's the street? Wall Street. Wall street. street. Thank you. Yeah. They, they've <laughs> also done a nice job there. And, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, I, I think if we're going to beat them up, we also have to give them praise every <laughs> once in a while if they deserve I would it. Agree. Thank you. Thank you, Ernie. So I actually have one other thing I wanted to announce, which I think most people have already heard, but just in case they haven't, it's very exciting that the American Dog Sculpture on the Common has a name. We had a huge contest. We had hunt over 200 names suggested. We narrowed it down to 10. We had voting over the last 10 days or so. We got almost, it was 
it was almost a thousand votes. It was over wow. 900 votes or something like that. It was really hot topic. Wow. And the new name for the dog is Havoc. That's H-A-V-O-C. And he is named after the recently retired police service dog of the same name. And, and the real Havoc came to our naming announcement and ceremony the other day. He wow. was just, um, he was very excited to be there and clearly very impressed with the stature. <laughs> anyway, um, so the, the dog is now named Havoc. And I think that the whole community seems really excited about it. So that's all. All right, I'm ready for a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Member Chairman LaRue. Yes. Vice Chairman and Pemba. Yes. Member Clerk Raymond. Yes. Member Covino. Yes. Member Gaffney. Yes. Member Spejo. Yes. Member Rappaport. Yes. All right. Thanks, everybody. The three of us are great. Don't forget to vote. To Breezy. So.